What's happening guys, today we're going to learn the easiest way to cut out logos and export with transparent backgrounds here in Photoshop. So let's get started. What's happening guys, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and if you're new to this channel and you love photography and photo editing then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with more tutorials just like this one. So today we're going to talk about removing backgrounds but more so exporting images with a transparent background. For today's example we're going to be using a logo, I just have this random generic logo here and I want to get rid of all this white so I can add it into this image over here. Every time I drag this logo into my images it has this white background attached to it. How can I get rid of that background without having to cut out this logo every single time? Let's say that you have gone ahead and you cut out your background. So I've already created a layer mask and I have a transparent background here in Photoshop. I go to export this image as a JPEG file and I still end up with this result here. I still have a white background on my logo, but when I exported the image, it looked like this. It had a transparent background. So what is the issue that we're doing wrong here? Ultimately, it ends up really coming down to what file type you're exporting with. Before we get into what file type we should use, I'm gonna first share a few easy ways that you can cut out your logos like this. So I'm just deleting my layer mask and starting fresh. If you have a logo like this where you have a ton of contrast between the background and your logo itself, in this case we have a light background and a dark logo, you'll be able to use a feature in Photoshop called Channels. You'll find Channels over here beside your layer icon so you can click on that tab and we have a bunch of different options here. If you don't see this Channels option, you can go up to Window and down here to Channels. Once you open up your channels tab, you'll go through and pick the one that has the most contrast between the background and your logo. So in this case, that's obviously the red channel. I'm going to duplicate this red channel by clicking it and dragging it down to this little new layer icon at the bottom and I'll have a red copy layer. With that red copy channel layer selected, I'll press command or control L on my keyboard to bring up my levels and I want to now just make this logo completely black. So I'll drag this up until my logo is completely black and my background is fully white so I'm not going to adjust the highlights at all. If your background is a little gray or something like that you can just start to bring down the highlights like this and it'll make those lighter grays begin to appear white. Once you've done that you can click OK and we'll hold command or control hover over our red copy layer thumbnail icon and you'll notice we have this little marquee box. We'll click on that and we get all these marching ants which represent our selection. Going back to our layers tab we can add this active selection onto a layer mask by clicking on our layer mask icon. If it looks something like this, that's the opposite of what we want. So with that layer mask selected, we can press Command or Control I to invert that layer mask. So that's the first way to cut out your logo really quickly. And there's not much manual labor involved in that one. Now I'll just rename this layer to Channels Example. And I'm going to show you another version of how we can do this. So I now just created a new layer with our logo so we can start fresh again. If you have a logo with a completely solid colored background, so in this case it's completely white, it can be any color you want though, we can use our Color Range feature. So to access that, we can go up here to Select, down here to Color Range, and click on that. Now you'll notice that we have this box that comes up and we have this little eyedropper tool. So if I click on the blue of my owl here, you'll notice that everything goes black except for my owl. So the reason being is that whatever color that you sample, that's the color that it's going to be selecting. So say I only want to select the blue, by clicking on that blue area it makes everything transparent represented by the black, only the blue areas visible represented by the white. Since I want to cut out my whole logo, we'll obviously click on the background of our image. So that means that everything that is black here will become transparent, everything that is white will become visible, but we can invert that later on like we did with our channels. Once you've selected that background color, we next have our fuzziness option here. This fuzziness slider just tells Photoshop how much wiggle room it has between selecting white and other similar colors. So by bringing up my fuzziness slider, it'll just start to take away some of the white along the edges of my words and along the outside of my emblem here. But since I don't want to go too crazy with this, just for today's example, I'll just set it right around 40. Again, this fuzziness slider is going to all depend on what your logo is looking like. So just do a little bit of playing around and see what your selection preview looks like as you move around the slider. Once you're happy with your fuzziness, we can click OK. As you'll notice, we once again have our marching ants around our logo. And so with those marching ants active, we can click on our layer mask. And with that layer mask selected, we can press Command or Control I to invert that layer mask. And now we have our transparent background. So this might look all fine and dandy, but I want to show you one quick thing that you may run into when you're cutting out your logo, and that's called fringing. So I'll just delete this channel's example, and I'm going to create a new layer 
below my layer one, which is my logo. With this layer two selected, I'm just going to fill it with black. So now black is sitting behind our logo. Now you see that there's some white stuff around our, the edges of our logo and it doesn't look as pristine as it did with our transparent background. And that's just because that white no longer blends in with our light background. It's all becoming super obvious. So how can we quickly get rid of that fringing in our logo? Because obviously we don't want any of that stuff. The easiest way to go about this is just to create a new layer above your logo icon and we'll create a clipping mask to our logo layer. So right clicking on your new layer and go here to create clipping mask. Now anything that I paint onto this layer will only affect this logo layer and nothing else beyond it. With that new layer selected, we'll grab our brush tool by pressing B and now we're just gonna sample a few colors and paint them in. So since our owl is a solid blue color, I'll hold my alter option key, click and sample that color. And now with a hardness of 100%, I'm going to just paint over my owl image on that new layer. And as you see, because it has a clipping mask, none of the color is spilling outside of our logo. It's only staying within the confines of our owl. Now we'll do the exact same thing on the same layer. With my brush tool active, I'll hold Alter Option, sample that gray color of the words, and now I can go and paint over those words and it gets rid of all that fringing for me. And now our logo looks as pristine as it possibly can be. So this is a really easy way to deal with that fringing in your logo because you don't want to have to deal with that later on once you've exported to a PNG file. So now that we have our logo looking super good, I don't need this black background anymore. I'll just delete that and now we're back to our transparent background. To make life easy for us, I'll shift click both of these layers and press command or control E to merge them into one. And now I just have my logo on one layer cut out from the white background. And now it's time to export this with the transparent background. So the easiest way to do that is we'll go and follow the same steps that you likely use already to export your images from Photoshop. All we have to do is go up here to File, Save As, and then you can name your file whatever you want. In this case, I'll just call it to Example Logo. And now where the important step comes in is in the format. So we'll change our format from Photoshop. We're not going to change it to JPEG, but we're going to go down here to PNG. Now having a PNG file will export with a transparent background so then when we go and add it into another image later on it will always have a transparent background. We will never have to deal with that white colored background again. So once you've changed your format to PNG we can go ahead and click save, click OK and now let's see how our PNG image turned out. I'll first drag and drop my example logo JPEG file into my image and as you see it has that white background. This is what we were struggling with before. Now I'm going to drag and drop my PNG image in, example logo PNG, and as you see it has no white background at all, it's exactly cut out just how we left it in Photoshop previously right here. So by exporting to a PNG file you now permanently have a transparent background for your logo and you can now drag and drop this logo into any image forever and it will always have a transparent background. You don't have to go through the steps of cutting out your logo every single time you add it into an image. It's really that simple and the export process literally takes seconds. So if you enjoyed today's video make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more Photoshop tutorials just like this one. Anyways guys, that's all I have for you for today. Again, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time. See you then.